Hello and welcome to episode 259 of the Epic Film Challenge to 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die. And welcome to 2020. This is the first Epic Film Challenge 2 video in the decade of the 2020s. And we're nearing the seven year anniversary of this series. And I'm a quarter way done with it. So if I keep at this pace, I'll be done with this series when I'm 54. Oh, let the kids join. <laughs> <laughs> By which point, another 30 editions of the book will be out anyway. But anyway. Yeah, so, it's going to slow down even more when there are kids in the pictures. So. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so but this is kind of a cheat of a video, but it's a film I don't think either of us want to watch again. So you've seen the title. We're talking about the film from 1987, Moonstruck, starring Cher mm. and Nicolas Cage. Now, we first watched this a couple of years ago in 24-hour movie marathon 7, because it was, I think the guideline was watch a film that was nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars but didn't win. And we kind of looked at it and we're like, okay, share Nicolas Cage, that's probably going to be kind of entertaining. And we really didn't know what we were getting ourselves in for. Well, it was entertaining. It was entertaining, yes. So we actually, just about an hour or two ago, we sat down and actually watched our reaction to that film in the marathon, which is really entertaining, actually. I think we could have, we should have filmed ourselves. I, yeah. The reaction was really funny because you'd forgotten some of the stuff that happened in the film and you couldn't believe what you were saying was happening in the film at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was like, wow, I can't make that shit up. It must have happened. <laughs> and I was like, did that really, really happen that way? And, and how <clears throat> into it I was, like mm. the way I was reenacting it. Yeah. Well, not completely, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the lines and everything. So I think one thing is is, is obvious, I, I think should be obvious, is the fact that we didn't know that this was in the book. A thousand one movies you must see before you die. There was no reason for me to think this would be in the book. I even um, joked about it. Right, okay. Is it a movie you must see before yeah, you die? So You're like, no. <laughs> what we're going to do with this video, because um, I think we had a good time with this, not in a traditional sense. Um, we enjoyed it for kind of the badness and the, the weirdness of it. It wasn't a bad movie. There were there was good parts to it. And, it wasn't and, a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm still confused as to why it was up for all these Oscars and everything, but I did I did think Cher was very good. But, no, because you read through and you didn't really know any of the other names that were up for the Oscars. So it was either a bunch of people nobody knew or Cher. Well, I'm sure people knew them. I just I had I wasn't aware of the other actresses that were up for best best actress that Which year. Which means that there wasn't that much to choose from anyway. Maybe I don't know who who can really say. But regardless, I'm still a bit baffled. Although I did agree with the um, the best supporting actress going to the actress who plays her mother in the film. But you're going to hear all about that because I've decided I'm just going to use the footage from the marathon, even if you have seen it, because it just sums up our feelings of watching the film for the first time. And, and it's fresher. Yeah, it's fresher. Like literally like halfway through the movie, we just stopped to talk about it, which you'll see, which I think is pretty entertaining because I just can't believe what I have saw. So I'm just going to use that for this video. Because it's entertaining anyway. It's more entertaining than us going, what happened there? Yeah, and it just isn't a film I, I'm that keen to revisit right now. It's been two years, maybe in ten years it might be interesting to go back to it. I don't know. But I'm still shocked that it was in the book. Yeah, I say it and you go like, no. I, no, I go, God, no. As if oh, like, right. Of course yeah, it, it wouldn't be in the book. But it was. <laughs> so we're going to show you that footage now and then we'll come back at the end and discuss whether it is a film you should see before you die. But... Uh, Here's our initial reactions from 2017. I think it was 2017. No, it was 2018. Because so I was thinking, what it was 18 because it was the year that we left. It was, and we did it like a month before I left. I think it was like really close to before. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, <laughs> we'll just roll the footage, and you'll see what we thought of Moonstruck. <laughs> so glad we watched this movie. <laughs> How long are we in into it? What's the running time? Uh... I can't believe that Well, just they, they met like three minutes ago. So. 40 minutes into the film. All right. Uh, fuck it. So Cher plays this woman who's she's married once. Her husband died. So she's been widowed. Um, but she's seeing this other guy who proposes to her. She doesn't love him. She likes him. But she wants to be married. So she says yes. But he has a brother who he hasn't spoken to in five years. Played by Nicolas Cage. And he says to her, can you just, you know, talk to him and invite him to the wedding? So Cher goes and speaks to Nicolas Cage, who is a guy who blames his brother for the fact that half his hand is missing. I lost my hand! I lost my bride! Right, so th there's that in the film. And as you just said, these two characters... Just met. Just met. 
five minutes ago, and uh, fuck it. We'll she she just she went up to his apartment to talk to him. She cooks him a steak, which he eats, <laughs> and they're 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 sat by the table, and she's just yelling at him because. He's a wolf, and he bit off his own hand because he didn't want to marry the wrong woman. And she, he's like, why are you marrying Johnny? He's a fool! And then he throws the table! <laughs> and then he's just stood there and he goes... And then he grabs her, stands her up, and then he kisses her, and she kisses him back, and then yep. she goes, wait a minute, wait a minute! And then she kisses him again! He lifts her up, and then he's walking across the floor. She's like, where are you taking me? To the bed. To the bed. And she's like, I don't care! I don't care! Take me to the bed! <laughs> You're mad at Johnny! Take your revenge shot on me! <laughs> Until there's nothing left! Until there's nothing only skin on bone! Skin <laughs> There'll be nothing left, he says. <laughs> oh my god, what is this film? Like, I'll be honest, it, it hasn't been bad. It, it, was, it hasn't been... No, but then this happened, and it's like, what happened? I mean, I've been impressed by Cher as well. She's been pretty good, and the, the, you know, the film's been alright, but this just took, it just completely nosed No, the second you got Nicolas Cage in it, things got crazy. I said, like, I, no, even the, his first scene, which was a bit over the top and Nicolas Cagey, the film still felt like a normal film. Now it just went so far beyond with that scene. That scene just, yeah. Where are you taking me? To the bed. Like his, oh my god. I don't care. I don't care. Take me it to the bed. It just came so care. far. No, right, okay, we're going to continue, but I, I just <laughs> I couldn't believe. Take the revenge out of me. <laughs> Until there's nothing left. <laughs> What did Johnny ever do to her? Huh? I mean, why why is she letting him? You know. I don't what? know. I don't know. It, it makes no sense to me. I, I could I could buy that she was attracted to him from the start, but it's she, she met him like five minutes ago, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's just they understand each other. You know. I don't like. I would have expected this like in an hour or something. Do you know what I mean? Like it building up or mm. just wow. Okay, and this is you know nominated for best picture. Well, you know. We have an hour left. Yeah. It, it could stuff, stuff could stuff you know. could happen. Okay, let's continue. Sorry for Rebecca, huh? Well, she must be now. You sure don't know what she's missing. Oh, your dad's cheating too. My dad's cheating, yes. Well, it's certainly been memorable. I <laughs> All right, six twenty-two. We're finished with Moonstruck. Um, nominated for six Oscars, it won the Oscar for Best Actress, yeah. Uh, best Supporting Actress, uh, the woman who plays her mother. And uh, it won for something else too. And it, I think it even won Best Screenplay. Or at the very least was nominated for it. Got great reviews across the board. People loved it. I can see why people enjoyed it. I can see why it was Back a popular movie. then maybe? I can see why it was a popular movie. It is very funny. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, but there's there's a moment at the end of the film, in the final scene, where Cher's character just goes like this. And does like the ultimate eye roll, and I just want to freeze frame that, show you that now on screen, and that's kind of how I mostly feel about the film, it's just a big kind of... Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was reading the reviews, and something I hadn't thought about was that people are framing it as, um, the movie's about this one night where the moon's big, and everyone falls under its crazy spell, they become moonstruck. So they've, they're, they're kind of acting on their impulses and stuff like that. I didn't get that from the film. When someone points it out, I guess I can see that. But to me, when the, the big moment between Cher and Nicolas Cage, whether she's going to decide to go with him or not, and he's trying to convince her. This is the romantic moment in the movie. The snow begins to fall. He's talking about love and how love is never perfect. Love can be awful and it can tear our hearts apart and stuff. Let's just embrace the awfulness of love and be together. And then he says, now get in my bed. Like when the cell line is get in my bed, that's when I just kind of don't really, and I'm not saying I'm offended by that line because I mean, it, it is what it is. It's just that I find it so, eh, you know, like that's it. Yeah, that's that's the big cell. She's looking at him and smiling at him like, oh. well, no way. Yeah, I don't know. It? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a very weird, uh, romance to me like uh, the, the bits of it work you know I like the line where he's like there's two things I, well, I, I don't even like that he's like there's two things I love the opera and you 
Like, I like the idea I of that. I just want the two of them together. Right, I like the idea of that, but then now that I think about it, the fact that he's in love with her after like half a day is just like, huh? And then. <laughs> yeah, with the whole moon thing, you know? The, the guy, the, the, the husband in that yeah, relationship I, was acting weird the next day, too. I get it. And she was all like, you know? I, I get it, yeah, now that I think about it, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's not just that romance, it's about her parents and their kind of marital problems and things like that, like you mentioned, her dad is, is cheating on her mother, and so that there's that kind of thing, but Nicolas Cage is just awful in some of the scenes of this film, like when he sees her by the fountain and he's just like, hi, you're here, it's just like, awful like i know people are like well he's meant to be awful he's nicholas cage like he, he commits man he's great and it's like sometimes he's just shit <laughs> you know and i thought that in most he does commit when he's acting crazy <laughs> yeah i lost my hand he had a tooth missing as well a b c d e f g <laughs> i mean only Nicolas Cage can I do, love Nicolas do the Cage. alphabet that way. But yeah. it, it felt like in this film he was like only like 65% Nicolas Cage, you know, and so it, it was just kind of, it just struck us off to me, you know. Uh, I liked Cher. I thought she was really good, actually. I was surprised. And I, I read up where she's from. She's from California, so I thought, oh, maybe she is this kind of Italian from New York. But, I mean, the, she did the accent well. If that is put on, I don't know. I don't know much about Cher other than the fact that I thought Elijah Wood was a son. And I have read that she has a son called Elijah. That is probably where I got it from. Mystery yep. solved. But I still think... No that, cult. I, mm, well... <laughs> <laughs> I still think there's something to it. That that, that Mandela effect, that, look it up. Right, so Cher won the Oscar for Best Actress. I looked at all the nominees and it's nothing I've really seen, so I can't really compare and say that was better. But it just uh, wasn't something I ever would have expected because I, all I know of Cher is that auto-tune song from the late 90s. Like I know that she was famous from songs back in the 60s and stuff. I know she's had this huge career of, you know... Uh, you only know, do you believe in life after love? Pretty much, yeah. She's got so much creepy. Stuff. I know. Well, I, I, I'm really. Uh, I got you, babe. Sunny and Cher. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. That I know. Now that you mention that, I know the song, but it's not it one I immediately. Kiss. It's not one that I immediately associate with Cher. It's just. It's just that part of pop culture that is just kind of. There's, there's a wall there, you know. Not a Donald Trump wall, but a wall nonetheless inside my head where I just don't know much about her at all. So I kind of expected it to be shit because, as far as I'm aware, she's a singer, and the only real song I know is that one that's auto-tuned and kind of bad. Even I don't though, like that song. Well, I, I kind of like it because it reminds me of this time period, exactly. but I don't like the song very much. <laughs> so, I was surprised. I thought she was really, really good. Oscar worthy? Mm. I, guess, I guess so. Maybe for that year. It was a weak year. I don't know. Um, but the film <laughs> the film itself, it was... It was you could win an Oscar if it's a weak year. Well, it's true. Sometimes it happens. It's just like, well, no, no, you can have an Oscar. She can have an Oscar. You all get Oscars. Oprah should host the, the next one. So, Moonstruck, what do you think? About the same as you, really. You, you kind of summed it all up. It was, was good. Chatting. I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. Um, no, uh, it, um, it almost kept me completely awake. <laughs> you were getting a bit sleepy. I was getting sleepy towards the end because then the craziness was over and I expected whatever came I, after that. I did really like the actress who plays Cher's mother in the film and I would actually agree with her winning an Oscar. I think that's that. I think really good supporting performance especially at the end like her i think she was the best actress actor in the whole film um and her character had a good arc basically where she was kind of wrestling with the idea that well you got fraser's dad yeah fraser's dad uh it was great seeing him but yeah she the whole film she's kind of realizing her husband might, might be cheating on her and how she deals with that and why is he doing this like, i really liked that that was really good and there were good bits with Cher too but uh overall just the the main romance just didn't really do much for me at all and was just a bit silly, and then by the end, <laughs> by the end, it's just like the big eye roll. Like, really? Okay, well, there you go. That's the film, and we're done. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we're kind of done on Moonstruck then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not watching that again. No, I, I, I didn't. Probably not. No. No. <laughs> but I, I kind of just, uh, I almost want to see is that. It a movie you must see before you die. God no, but. I don't know, I, I, that scene is just, it's so like weird, I, I need to see that scene again where she's just like, oh, take me, take me till there's nothing left, like, it's, it was so a left field, I couldn't believe it, because the whole movie up until that point was relatively normal. I feel like normal. there was something missing before that, maybe they cut it out, there was like a huge deleted scene. 
Right. Like a so, full day where they... So she just met Nicolas Cage's character, Johnny, and she goes up to his, his, his room and his Ronnie. apartment. Huh? Nicolas Cage's character's name is Ronnie. And his brother's Johnny. Yes. Yes, okay, Ronnie. Uh, it shows how memorable the film was. just finished it five minutes ago. And she goes up to his apartment, she cooks a mistake. What's and her name? I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait. Maria? <laughs> I don't know. It's Italian, right? Uh... <laughs> I got no idea. What do they call her? Um, uh, <laughs> I have absolutely no fucking clue what I can't remember. <laughs> Johnny and Ronnie, that's all I remember. I got Claudia? No, no, I don't know. I don't, you have to. Maybe we'll just better leave that and just. just yeah. Um, so, the scene where she goes up to his, his apartment, she cooks him a steak, and then she's like, right, sit down, we're going to talk. And then it cuts to her dad dropping off his mistress. And then it cuts back. And so it feels like no time has passed. And yet apparently, what Connie picked up on was that she asked for a whiskey before that. So apparently mm. they're drunk yeah. out of their minds when they do the whole kind of, oh, take me. And he's like, I'm going to put you in my bed and all that kind of stuff. So they're supposed to be like blind drunk. Yeah. But... Even though she wakes up later on that night and looks up at the moon and she's like, oh, I'm just looking at the moon. Then she goes back to bed again. She wakes up in the morning. She's like, oh my God, what did I do? Even though she's like had this whole afternoon, evening night where she's woken up and been aware and I guess sober. And then the morning after that's when she realizes how, you know. So it just, I don't know. But yeah, whatever her character's name was, she, was she made. Fran? No, oh, Fran was really. from the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I I must assume that her name wasn't spoken much in the film, because Ronnie and Johnny were said a fair amount. So I got that at least. I don't know. And her dad's name was Cosmo, because that's a very strange yeah. name. So I don't know. And her mother's name was Rose. You know, getting all these names kind of <laughs> filtering back to my brain, but uh, her name, no idea. What's her name? No, because it, it's, it's more from her perspective and stuff, so I, I, I don't think that uh, it's said very much, if at all. I, it must have been said at some point, I don't know. We Wonder don't know. Propose? Yeah. Oh, I think it's Maria. Bobo. I think it's Maria. I think it is. I even remember the waiter, Bobo. Bobo. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> oh, please remove all evidence of this girl. And bring me a large vodka. Look, look we have to find out a name now. Look it up. Go on um, IMDb, Wikipedia, whatever the equivalent is. It's uh, Loretta. Loretta. I thought. <laughs> it's like, was it? <laughs> was that her name? Get back, Loretta. <laughs> we remember Bobo and Cosmo <laughs> and Rose. Bobo. <laughs> oh my god. So there you have it. That was our first thoughts and reactions to Moonstruck, and. I don't think we would glean anything new from revisiting it. Maybe we'd be more prepared for how ridiculous it was going to be and we might enjoy it a little bit more, but... Less shocking. Less shocking, more yeah. More funny rather than sitting with our mouth hanging open thinking that yeah. this, this is happening. And I think I think someday we will watch this again and we'll enjoy it based on the memory we have of it. And, you know. Pretty distinctly said in the video that I don't want to watch it again. I think we'll watch it again at some point. I think at some point in the future... We're going to be like, was it really that bad? Yeah, I think it's going to be like the curiosity factor. And Maybe then... on its 50th anniversary. <laughs> so in 2027. Right, okay. That's not that far off, actually, when you really consider it. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? 27. What am I saying? That's the that's the 40th. So 37. Okay, that is quite, quite a way off. Yeah. The Earth probably won't even exist at that point. We'll all just have exploded and destroyed everything. If we're lucky. If we're lucky. Right, so Moonstruck, is it a film you should see before you die? No. Part of me wants to say yes, because it was really... The self-destructing part of himself? Yeah, like some men just want to watch the world burn, that kind of thing. But I think there's... It's like a train wreck. You can't help but look at it. Yeah, there is... I, I think it's going to be entertaining no matter what. And people love this film. Like I've I've seen people I know who think that this is like one of their favorite romantic comedies. They really enjoy it. I was reading the the write up in the book to see like how can they possibly explain this? And it's like you know Nicolas Cage and Cher they slowly begin to fall in love with each other. And it's like no, slowly, it's no, it's it's instant. There's no development there. You know that kind of thing. But I guess it's the whole moon and everyone falls under its spell, which is kind of part of the comedy of it. Uh, and it said many people tried to repeat you know this kind of formula, but none have bettered it. And I'm just like really. Really? No one's bettered this film. Uh, I, I 
I disagree. <laughs> uh, so it's just one of those things where I guess it connected with an audience and people love it. But for me, it, it just was one of those films that is kind of enjoyable because some of the acting's pretty over the top. And It's because it's back to when everybody loved Cher and before they realized how crazy Nicolas Cage was. I don't know. I feel like how crazy Nicolas Cage is perceived to be these days would make people enjoy this even more. So I don't know. Uh, I can't Probably, really say. because you always want to see him craze, yeah. craze out. But, but, but ultimately... Taking the nick. <laughs> no? Okay. Ultimately, I don't think that this is a film I'd recommend to anyone. You know? Maybe I'd say the scene in the bakery when he's ranting about his hand being lost. You might want to check that out on YouTube. It's pretty funny. Or maybe the scene where she's like, you know, take me to the bed. But apart from that, you know, there, there's good stuff in the film. It's a good film, but it just isn't really more than that, I don't think. And I don't know, maybe re revisiting it would change that. But for me, even if I revisited it and thought, oh, wow, this is really good, it's still not great. There's no way it's a great film. And considering... You're not going to say really good either. Yeah, and, well, maybe not. But tolerable maybe considering the films that could have been in this book that aren't <clears throat> great dictator um hidden fortress um i i don't know why it's in there but you know at least it's a varied book in terms of having the kind of crowd pleasers in there but well, I, I do not think it's a film you should see before you die i think most people could live pretty comfortably as a film fan without seeing moonstruck well that goes for a lot of great movies as well some of those movies are in there just because they're as strange as they are like troll 2 I think that's the movie that most people should see because it's so horrible. Yeah, but with... See, Moonstruck, it has those moments where it's like, oh, that's really bad. But it's not like, oh, it's so bad, you got to see this. No, you know? no, exactly. That's it's, why it doesn't Tr Troll is so book. consistently like, you know... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Moonstruck isn't bad enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not good enough either. It's just mediocrely yeah, yeah. horrible. No, I would say horrible. It isn't horrible. Okay, it, it it's just horrible. mediocrely bad. I did really... I, 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 as I watched us talking about it, I do remember being really impressed with Cher, but that might be kind of the fact where I, I wasn't expecting it to be any good, you know. Um, but, yeah, so it's just one of those things we, we didn't love it. <laughs> and, uh, kind of like Adam Sandler, you're not expecting him to do good, but then he's actually pretty good for him. But yeah. not amazing when you compare it to other people. Yeah. Anyway, so that was our thoughts uh, on Moonstruck from two years ago and our brief thoughts now on why we don't think it's a film you should see before you die. So I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.